Hi friends, it's Sarah, the owner and maker behind Multifarious Nature. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you're a new viewer, welcome to you. And if you are a returning viewer, big welcome back. I'm so glad you guys decided to join me again this week. Um, I was looking forward to speaking with you. So <clears throat> we'll get into, uh, as far as shop update goes, I guess the exciting news is I did do some dyeing yesterday. <laughs> um, the thing is, is it's not for the shop per se. <laughs> I actually did some dyeing for... Uh, my swap partner, um, I am participating in it's called Fiber Collective's Fiber Swap, and I uh, did dye up uh, some of a colorway for my swap partner. I think she's going to love it, so I'm really excited. And um, yeah, so that's a lot of fun. So that's what I've been working on as far as the shop goes, um, but we'll get right into works in progress. Very exciting. All right, so I worked on just a couple things, and one of them you'll see quite a bit of progress on, where the others, it's hard, there's not a lot of progress, but I still want to show you guys because I did work on them, so it does count. So the first thing <clears throat> is, of course, my Big Cozy Cardi, Andrea Mowry's wonderful pattern. It's called Big Cozy Cardi. For those of you not familiar with it, it is this super cozy looking cardigan. Looks like basically you're wearing a blanket, what's not to like. And I am going to be knitting that up with, <clears throat> let's see here. Uh, this is my, <laughs> oh my goodness, my chestnut colorway. I'm losing my mind. This is the chestnut colorway uh, dyed by me. Um, my uh, hand tied yarn brand, Multiverse Nature. And I don't currently have this colorway uh, stocked in the shop, but if you do want it to order it, definitely uh, zap me over a message in the contact me section of um, the website. So if you go to multifarianstature.com um, and look into um, doing a custom order, just contact me and let me know what you want. I'm more than happy to dye it up for you. I love this colorway. So this is on my 100% Peruvian Highland wool base and it is this really fun pattern. It's a very simple pattern. It's, rep it's a repeat of four different rows it's very relaxing. It's absolutely wonderful. I love it. And I'm just trucking along through it. <laughs> of course, I'm mid-row because <laughs> that's what I always do with these. But that's what happens with these massive amount of stitches. You just always get stuck in the most precarious spot. But it's really fun. It's a really fun pattern so far and because it's very basic in a sense. But it's a lot of knitting. Basically, you're going to be doing a really big rectangle. And then there will be a collar portion and then cuffs. So for the collar portion, I am going to be using my alpaca. And I've misspoke on this multiple times. So, so I do have um, some alpaca, 100% alpaca in the shop. So some of them you'll see that it says 100% alpaca. But the one that I actually have this tied up on is my, my alpaca silk base. So it's my Surrey silk base. So it actually is a Surrey alpaca and silk. I misspoke on this before and I, yeah, I get confused, you know, I get confused because I had just 100% alpaca for the longest time and then I did um, venture in to get the Surrey silk and yeah, my supplier just stopped carrying the other one so I transferred over to this one and I really like it. I like it. There's um, more yardage and yeah, it's really, really nice. So great. Again, this is my Autumn Kiss colorway. It's really beautiful, cozy color and bright and fun. And it's just, it has everything I could ask for in a color. I think it would complement so many skin tones. It's really beautiful. And it has kind of this like almost quirly, um, light tangerine color to it. And then there's just some beautiful reds in here and some deep plum reds really beautiful. So if you're looking for a super fun color, I have this currently dyed up in the shop. Um, I do have a few on my Surrey silk base, and then I also um, have some on some sock bases as well. So definitely check that out if you're interested in a super fun color with. And that's going to be the color of this one. So I'm really looking forward to it. This is going to be a super cozy, fun cardigan, and very much looking forward to wearing it. But it's going to take me just a wee bit longer to get that done. So I know I didn't get a lot of progress. I should show you that. So where I was at, I actually have been taking naps on my lunch break. I've been pretty tired. It's been really dark here for a while. A lot of people are dealing with this and I get 
pretty um, affected by, I want to say, like, the seasonal effect, I don't know what it's called, seasonal depressive disorder or whatever, but I do find that I'm pretty sensitive um, when it's dark a lot, and eventually I do get, I have to take vitamin D. I have a vitamin D deficiency. Many people in Michigan do, and um, yeah, so... <laughs> I didn't get a lot of work done on this because I was definitely napping during my lunch break quite a bit this week. So there you go. But anyway, um, next we're going to talk about the brick sweater, which I actually got some more done on the brick sweater. Um, I don't think I got a lot though. I mean, it's progress. Progress is progress, right? <laughs> I didn't do as much knitting this week either. I just, you know, it's one of those weeks. Sometimes that happens. Life happens and, you know, you just don't get as much done on it as other times. So it is what it is. But here you go. So I've got my sleeves done. I, I showed you guys that last time because this is where I was at before. So I got just a, like, I'd say a couple inches, which is not bad. It's not bad at all. Um, again, this is my brick sweater by Claire Lee. Once I finish this off, which I'm pretty much there, it's going to be ribbing and then it's, I just do the collar and I'm done. I don't think I'm going to have it done by next weekend though. I just want to put that out there. I just don't think I'm going to. But if I do, that would be amazing because I really want to wear it. But I don't know. I don't know. Um, I am using one of my, ooh, here we go. Um, the Multiverse Nature's Analog Row Counters. I love these. Um, this I took out of the shop for myself. Um, but I do have many others. I actually do have a couple of this really pretty light lilac color in the shop still. And it has this really beautiful progress keeper that is a rose. I don't know if you can see that. It's going to get kind of blasted out here. But it has like a carved rose in this metal bead. So beautiful. I actually have that. Um, I have just a couple of them available still, but yes, um, really fun. And you can use it as a progress keeper, but it's actually a little progress keeper that goes along with the analog row counter. And you can count up to 100 rows with this, so it's pretty handy, I have to say. And I've been using that to keep track of my, because there's some decreasing going on in here and everything, and it's every so many rows you do a decrease and an increase. And I use my analog row counter and I don't have to take notes anywhere. It just, it's there. I know where I'm at. <laughs> so I highly recommend analog row counters if you would like to keep track of your progress uh, for repeats and everything and you don't have to write things down. So this is definitely seeming like it's going to fit pretty perfectly actually. I am trying to use up every stinking ounce of this wool. Let me show you guys what I've got left here. It's a little, okay. So I have to do the ribbing still, right? And it's going to be a couple inches of ribbing, I think. This is all I have left of the brown. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm debating just um, knitting around with this until I get to the point where it's like basically gone. And then I will start the ribbing. And I will have to use the other color because I was going to use this color. But I know I don't have enough to do the ribbing with this. So I will have to switch to this lighter color for the ribbing at the bottom, which I didn't initially want to do necessarily, but I think it'll look okay. Part of that is, to me, I always like, I don't really want to, um, what, okay, women out there, I know you can understand this struggle. So, <laughs> um, if you, if you think about your sweater, if you're doing something light, it's gonna and, and contrasting is gonna draw attention, right? So usually not everyone, everybody's different. But someone like myself, I have bigger hips, and so I they're pretty proportionate to my um, my shoulders, so they're wider hips. Um, so it's I don't always like wearing something if it's um, contrasting at my my hips because then to me it just looks wider. I don't know. It's, I don't know. It's a visual thing. I think it makes it look wider and that doesn't, not it is not necessarily wider. I don't know. Am I the only one who has this struggle? <laughs> so when I think of sweaters, I feel like having the contrast around your neck, fine, wrists, fine, but having the contrast around my weight or not my waist, but my hips, I don't know. 
I, it's not like, I'm not, I wasn't looking forward to that. I think it'll be fine. I know I'll still wear it. I know I will. But I ran into that a little bit with the Andrea Maori um, Alpen Glow because it has the contrast around the hip area as well. And I do still wear that and I do like it. So I think it'll be fine. It'll be fine. I'm overthinking it. <laughs> I will show you guys this because I did work on it, but I really didn't work on it that much. <laughs> it's the, um, the, the one I didn't work on much last time either. Oh my gosh. It's the What Tomorrow Brings shawl. It is on my Chiyoku needles and again my little adorable tulip um, stitch protectors that you put them on your needles so your stitches don't slide off. But um, I am on the next color here. What day am I on? Let's see. I am on 19. So I just made it to the next day. Basically I did one row or two rows, two rows of the next day colorway. And this is the progress, so that you guys don't think I'm nuts. I really did, like, three rows, four rows. Okay, maybe it was five rows. So, I mean, it's been a couple rows. There's a lot of stitches. But, yeah, not a lot of progress comparatively to many others. Again, this is a really fun pattern. I just have been distracted by other shiny objects, and I will show you that. And you will see why I was distracted by it. But, yes, I was. I was distracted. I'm almost done with this. So I really should finish it <laughs> so I can get it off the needles. But I'm sure you guys run into that too, right? You just want to start all the fun new projects. And I know you guys showed you this in the last one, but for those of you who are new, these are really cute. I cannot remember the name of the Stitch Marker Advent Calendar. When you Google Stitch Marker Advent Calendar, I know it's one of the ones that pops up. Um, it was part of the clearance at my local yarn store, so I did pick up one. And she had just had all different like random things this year. And this, there was a button stitch marker in it, and then this little Pac-Man, which I swear is the cutest thing ever. Pac-Man. <laughs> anyway. Yes. But I did work on it a little bit. But it's just, it is what it is, right? So I'm going to show you guys the next project that I worked on, and I worked on it quite a bit. It also whipped up quickly because it's a larger gauge, so... Slightly cheating in that sense, but it's not cheating. It's still working on it. It's still working on it. <laughs> so for those of you that um, are new, you won't know this, but I, I like to hand spin as well. And and by hand spin, I also use, use a wheel. It's still hand spinning to me. I use a wheel. Uh, I have a ladybug, and it's a shot ladybug. Um, it, I love it. And I spun up my first ever fleece that I processed and spun was a Cotswold fleece. And that's this one here. And I have a sweater's quantity. This is my first one in this Cotswold fleece. You can see the thick and thins, much more art type yarn. Um, but I wasn't sure if I'd have enough to make Ozetta's uh, wonderful, I'm going to show you the picture of it, Miles shirt jacket. I'm super pumped, you guys, because I weighed my yarn, and guess what? I have more than enough of weight of yarn to make it, so I don't have to use my gotland, which is not a big deal, but it, oh, it just gets better and better. I can't wait to share this with you. Okay, so again, that's the Mile Shirt Jacket by Ozetta. Awesome, awesome pattern so far. I've only been knitting on it for a little bit, but I'm really excited because for those of you that have never knit with hand spun yarn, especially yarn that you've hand spun, you might not understand it, but you probably can at least think about, kind of think of relating to it. It is the most amazing, rewarding feeling. <laughs> so I've been knitting with it. I am using size 10 needles. I'm pretty certain that's what the pattern calls for. I'm double checking myself here. Because okay, I did get gauge. Yes, I, uh, it is the right size. Um, I did get gauge. However, I is odd. My I don't know if it's called like rowing out. I'm not quite sure, because when I was um, measuring it, so the pattern is excellent because not only does she include like how many rows and things of that nature, she actually includes how long it should be at that point, which is great because if you do happen to slightly well have thick and thin yarn and have a little inconsistency, 
she tells you how long it should be. So as long as you hit like a length, you can stop a little earlier, which is what I'm running into. Um, I seem to get gauge, but then when I knit up because of the thick and thin sections, I, I'm meeting, I'm hitting the length earlier than the rows. So I'm trying to follow it by length versus rows at this point, <laughs> just so that it's not going to be super massive. Um, yeah. So there we go. I am using my analog row counter. This is another one from my Multifarious Nature Shop. I think I only have one more of this style, which is really beautiful. It has this kind of garnet colored glass bead on there. Um, and then this really pretty kind of um, uh, amber, <laughs> I'm losing my words, amber colored stone and um, bead here. And these are, this is, these are upcycled from jewelry that I've deconstructed. And yeah, so. Again, love my analog row counter. I'm using that for the row counting, but really I'm also measuring it because like I said, I'm going a little bit longer than the rows. So, but here, here we go guys. So this is what it's looking like. I am not alternating skeins. I'm just knitting the way it goes because these are not hand dyed. So they're just like, they're all over the place with how they're spun up. It's just totally random. I literally just made roll eggs out of the different colors that this was a multicolor fleece and it literally just turned into just like look at this it's like striping and now it's more solid but slightly variegated looking or tonal it looks tonal it looks tonal um love it so this is the i guess this is the top working down i'm not exactly sure what portion of the sweater this is yet i have my ideas of what i think is going on right now which is gonna be interesting i'm not sure but i because i think the construction of the sweater is actually kind of fascinating so, um, yeah, I am terrible about reading ahead. I kind of did, but, <laughs> but I have to tell you guys, I'm so excited because I don't know if you remember, um, those of you who have been with me before, but I, I said it's a little prickly and I don't think it's going to be the softest to wear next to skin. However, after knitting it up, it's slightly relaxing a little bit. It's actually not so bad. It's very soft to the touch. And it's not as prickly as initial encounter. So it makes me think that having it on the collar is not going to be as big of an issue as I thought. I'm, I'm pretty excited. I think, and I know that when I wash this and block it, it's going to be even softer. So I'm really excited. And this is Cotswold. So <clears throat> Cotswold is a longer fiber. Usually it's like four to five inches. So you know, it's, it kind of lends itself towards more of the Icelandic, um, more rustic side of wool, meaning slightly more higher prickle factor. Um, the, uh, the, if you look at, there's, there's books that tell you all about spinning and like the different fiber properties and everything. It does have a higher count, which is why it's a little bit, um, it has more feel to it, where like a merino is super soft and fine fleece. Um, Cotswolds definitely lend itself more towards the rustic end of things. So it makes it, I would think it would make an excellent shirt jacket. That's what I'm making, it's like a little cardigan jacket. So I think it's going to be great for that, very durable with that long fiber. But um, I'm really excited to see what it looks like. It's just, it's turning out so wonderfully random and beautiful. And I just love it because there's, you know, these areas where it's marled. It was like, um, cause these are, uh, this is a two ply. So there were areas where it was the kind of a cream colored single and then a black single, and then they got marled together and created that wonderful barber pulling. And then there's other areas like this that look more like, um, like it was hand dyed. It's so cool. I love it. This is the natural colored fleece. I did not dye this. I'm really excited about it. So I'm almost done with this portion lengthwise, and then this will be put on hold. And then I think I'm probably knitting another portion. I'm not quite sure. We'll see. I'm really excited about it though. I'm really enjoying the process. As you can see, that's quite a bit of this, some serious distance, and I haven't worked on it that much. Um, it's, but it's a larger, like I said, larger gauge needle size is 10. So that knits up a lot faster. And it's just wonderful. It's wonderful. So if you're ever interested in doing hand spinning, I do recommend it. Um, I know Andrea Mowry's talks about this in her I'll Knit If I Want To videos all the time. But once you go down that rabbit hole of hand spinning yarn, it's hard, guys. 
it's hard because it's a lot of fun. <laughs> and then it's so rewarding, not only to make it, but then like to knit with it. Oh, it just, the whole process. So here's what it looks like caked up too, just so you can see it. <laughs> but I just love seeing it knit up because you can just see how much it truly unique it is. So it will not look symmetrical. The other shoulder, I think this is the shoulder. The other shoulder will not match, you know, and it's so warm because I've, I've had this on my lap when I'm working on it and it's so cozy warm. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. And I'm excited because this knitting up so quick, I think I'm actually going to knit it up rather quickly, which is great because of course it is, um, I can't speak. <laughs> it's March. My goodness, it's March. It's spring. So this is like the perfect time to wear a sweater jacket because it, well, right now it's pretty cool out. I'd say it's maybe in the 40s today, actually. Um, so it's kind of the perfect weather to wear one of these, which I can't wear, of course, at the moment, but I will get there. Um, it's, it's really pretty pleasant out. It's starting to look like it's going to rain or something. It's kind of getting that creepy overcast. But it was absolutely beautiful this morning. Um, again, that was my Ozetta. I'm see tangent. Oh, dear. Anyway, <laughs> so... That was all my works in progress. I have no finished objects because I have too many works in progress and they're, they're, that's what happens. Um, but anyway, yeah, I hope you guys are doing well. Share what, what you're working on. Um, do you do any hand spinning? And if so, have you knit any projects with your hand spinning? I'd love to hear what projects you've made. I'm always interested in finding out new fun projects to, do hand, to use your hand spinning with. You can really use it for anything. Uh, it's just that... Of course, when you get into garments, it gets a little bit trickier because you have to have a little more leeway. It could be bigger than you think when you're knitting it <laughs> and things like that. So I would just love to hear what your thoughts are and what you guys are up to. Um, yeah, like I said, kind of life update. Um, as far as that goes, well, it like I said, it's weird today. So last night, um, we were supposed to have family come visit, but <laughs> we were supposed to get like this nasty winter storm and... And my family lives in Illinois, and so it was supposed to be nasty from Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, I mean, a lot of areas, not just us. Um, we're going to get hit with a decent amount of snow, and, like, my husband heard at one point 13 to 18 inches, which, again, isn't the biggest deal when you think of how much snow we've gotten other times, but it was supposed to happen in a relatively short amount of time, which that's dangerous at that point, you know. Um, can't see, it's slippery, really dangerous. So of course, um, my family and I, we decided not a good idea to travel. So very good that they stay home because, um, you know, it did end up being really icy out, which that for sure would have been an issue for them coming up, but it's so crazy. So even yesterday they said, uh, the weather people <laughs> said it, we could get like six plus inches of snow, which again, not terrible, but six plus, meaning like, how much? It could be anything. And we got one inch, you guys. <laughs> that is the craziest thing. So I actually kind of start to believe the weatherman here where we currently live. We live out in the country, for those of you that don't know. And uh, for the most part, the past couple big snowstorms we've had have been pretty accurate. When they say we're going to get like six inches or 12 inches, we get six or 12 inches. Like we get the amount. Like if they say, tw oh, you're going to get up to 12 inches, we get the 12 inches. If they say you're going to get up to six inches, we're going to get the six inches. Like we get the top amount that they say pretty consistently. But this time they started with their minimum and did not even give a maximum. So I thought we could end up with a ridiculous amount of snow. And so we for sure um, didn't want them to be traveling in that because that could be crazy. And then here we got one inch. I'm like, how did the meteorologist get that so wrong? <laughs> I mean, like so wrong. It was definitely still like very slippery, um, slippery out. So, uh, cause it was, I think there was some rain or it was cause, because it was the high thirties yesterday and then it snowed and some of that then melted while it was snowing. And then it kept snowing very heavy, like huge snowflakes. They were huge. Um, but then it just stopped. It stopped snowing. And I thought this is before I went to bed. And I thought to myself, well, the snowstorm is supposed to go until like very early in the morning on Saturday today. And I thought, well, eh, we're going to get like an insane amount of snow after we go to sleep. But it had stopped. It had stopped snowing. And I thought, 
is that it? Is that all we're going to get? No way. So I went to bed completely thinking that when I woke up this morning, there was going to be a ridiculous amount of snow on the ground and it didn't snow anymore. It did not snow more after that one inch. So needless to say, that's crazy. I don't know. It is Michigan. I know the weather can be unpredictable. We live close to Lake Michigan, which yeah, it, it lake effect snow is, is a crazy thing and it definitely happens, but I don't know. <laughs> it was so unpredictable. So anyway, to make the this really long story extra long, um, <laughs> it's the craziest thing. So we after what they said we were supposed to get like a you know ridiculous amount of snow. We only got one inch, and then today I think it hit about forty. It has to be close to forty degrees outside. Everything's melted. Everything's melted. There's no snow anywhere. It was sunny most of the day. Um, within this past hour, it got kind of overcast and looks like it's gonna rain. But that's it all melted it's gone there's no trace of it you wouldn't know you wouldn't even know that we had gotten snow this is the craziest thing ever but I'm grateful because this is more like um spring weather right where you have like this blip of snow and then it melts and then it's nice out so the good and bad of of uh of March I'm a March baby so <laughs> I know how it goes my birthday is at the end of March I'm a March 30th baby and it's always weird. Like my birthday, you never know. It could be sunny and 75 degrees and you're wearing shorts outside. Or it can be in the 30s or 40s, um, overcast, raining, or sleeting. I've had sleeting on my birthday at the end of March. <laughs> so, and that was in Illinois, by the way. So crazy. You just never know. March is a, is a weird month, but, uh, yeah, yeah. How's, how are things by you guys? You know, did you get hit with the storm, this crazy storm that came through that was supposed to be crazy wicked? Did you actually end up getting like a lot of snow, like they said, or, or did they tell you you weren't going to get a lot and then you got a lot? Cause maybe you got, maybe you got our snow. It's possible. It's totally possible. And, and if so, oof, I hope you stayed home and you're cozy in your house. And yeah, cozy warm. <laughs> anyway, oh my gosh. Yeah. But I'd love to catch up with you guys. I love uh, to hear what you're up to. And I look forward to catching up with you again soon. Have a wonderful rest of your week. And I will talk to you soon. Take care. Bye.